Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, this is it, part number one, three, that's right, 13 of the Mortal Kombat 2 restoration. <laughs> My God. <laughs> You know what though, we haven't worked on this game in a while. And honestly, I feel like I've been working on this game for around five years, but I am actually pretty excited to get back into this project. And I thought we kind of ease back into it here with this video. Now in this video here, I kind of want to shift gears and revisit our old friend, the Polo Monitor. Because if you guys remember in the previous videos, we basically rebuilt this monitor, but it's still in shutdown. And actually when I was in the UK, uh, uh, at, at Arcade Club, the tech there told me to look at some caps. And so in this video here, I want to go through those caps, test them, and then if we need to order the parts, then maybe in the next video we'll put them in and, and hopefully fix the monitor. Anyway, before we start though, why don't we kind of review, let's go over there and look at the cabinet, because if you're just kind of joining the series here, I'll show you guys the cabinet, what we've done and what we need to do. Let's kind of go over that right now. So let's go over here. So basically, I bought this cabinet uh, for like fifty dollars on Craigslist, it was painted black and it was empty. Okay, and it was it was a Mortal Kombat two, but again, someone painted it black and it was totally empty. There was nothing inside of it. So over la over the the course of last summer, we restored this game, and I think it turned out pretty darn good. Uh, basically, we bonded all the edges, tightened up all the corners, uh, we put new artwork on it, new T molding, new black vinyl in the front here, restored the coin doors, the control panel all that stuff and it's actually looking very very good but there is nothing inside of it <laughs> so that's what we need to do next we need to fix the monitor we need to wire it up put the board in there and play us some Mortal Kombat and yeah we still need to do this uh, decal that goes right here I actually got a new decal from Joe Zazebo but in this video here I kind of want to work on the monitor and then we'll revisit this later maybe in a next video or one after so anyway let's go over here let's let's take a look at the uh, the polo and let's talk about what we're gonna do um, and again, when I was in the UK at Arcade Club, uh, the tech uh, said to me, Hey John, uh, I saw your video, I saw that your polo was uh, in shutdown mode, it's ticking, you really need to look at these caps over here, okay? And then also, um, there was a, a gentleman on YouTube, I think his name is uh, Sunken Canoe. He did a video on rebuilding a, a polo and he replaced one of these uh, film caps over here and it also fixed his shutdown problem. And also, if you look at the flow chart, it, it, you know, it's funny too because I did have this flow chart last summer, but I dismissed something that was over here because I assumed I replaced all these caps. That's not the case. So let, let's kind of go through the flow chart here. So it says blank screen, okay? Well, I'll tell you what's happening is that when we power it up, we have a black screen. There, there's no neck glow and the thing is ticking, okay? So it says here, blank screen, yes. Test the fuse, is it okay? Yes, it is. Um, is the monitor making a subtle ticking sound? That's the sound of the power supplies over current protection. Um, you have a short circuit somewhere. So yes, it's making a ticking sound. And then we're over here, okay? And then it says shorted hot, okay? So we, we replaced that and tested all that, and that's fine. It says test with the diode check on ohms, ground the black meter, blah, blah, blah. And then it says uh, test with power off. And then it says uh, diode 116 through 119 are shorted. 134 or 135 are shorted. Uh, we tested all of those diodes in, in one of the previous videos. And then it says bad high voltage unit. That's the flyback. We replaced that. And then it says C172, C174, and C175 shorted. Okay? Let me tell you something. When we rebuilt this monitor last summer, I replaced all the capacitors. So I disregarded this completely because I thought I replaced those caps. Well, it turns out... You know, after talking to the Arcade Club tech, and also after you guys sent me the link to that video, C172, 174, and 175 are actually these film caps over here. I never replaced those. <laughs> so, so what I want to do in this video is I want to pull those out, and I want to test these caps, and we're going to test them with our uh, with our uh, capacitance uh, tester here, our LCR meter, okay? And we're going to test the caps. We're going to see if they're good or bad. And then if they are bad, which I'm hoping they are, I'm going to order these parts. And then in the next video, we'll put this all back together and see if we fixed it. And if we did fix it, that's exciting. Then we can move on to basically uh, finishing up the cabinet, which right now is nothing more than putting the wiring harness in and... Um, 
and the PCB, the power supply, and all that stuff, which is not going to be that bad. So let me go ahead here and get my soldering iron going. And let's get our... Let's get our desoldering iron out. It does feel good to be working on this kind of stuff again, doesn't it? It's been a long time. <laughs> I really hope those caps are bad. I gotta remember how to use that LCR meter because I feel like every time I use it, I'm starting over from the f for the first time. So let's go ahead here and plug all this stuff in and we'll let it heat up. So we really just need the desoldering iron here. All right, so let's take a look at our LCR meter. So we are going to use this to test those caps. Positive, negative, okay. And let's see, I'm trying to remember, so ESR. Okay. I should grab a, a cap here. I don't remember quite how to use this thing. I swear to God, every time I use that, we're, we're starting over. Hang on a second. All right, so I just threw a cap on here just so we can kind of do a test here and reacquaint ourselves with this little unit. So it says here that it's reading at 361 micro, uh, uh, microfarads here. Um, and then the ESR is 0.149 uh, 5 ohms, which is really low resistance. And ESR is equivalent series resistance. So ESR basically tells us kind of the how much life is left in the cap. And then this is the value it's reading. So this is supposed to be 470. And we're actually getting 360. And I think this thing might be plus or minus 20%, you know. So this is actually a brand new cap. And I, I feel like it's not really reading great at 362 it's supposed to be 470. Um, let's, let's just kind of try another one too. Again I, I just kind of want to reacquaint ourselves but I think the the life of that cap was probably okay. So let's let's take this cap here. So I think the higher the resistance here the less life the cap has and you should replace it. So let's go ahead and put our positive here on the longer lead and our negative here. And so this is uh, 1.2 ohms and 19 microfarads. This is a 22 microfarad. So we can kind of get an idea. So ideally, the lower the resistance, the higher quality the cap is. And oh, did, I, did this thing just shut down because the battery died? I think I need to replace the battery. And by the way, uh, 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 viewer Tom sent me this thing. So Tom, thank you. This is a very cool device. Um, I'm going to go change the battery. I think it just shut down. Let's try it again. Yeah, I'm going to change the battery. Hang on, it's been a while. Okay, I changed the battery. And, and interestingly enough, the reading is actually different now. Probably more accurate. So this cap again is a 22 microfarad. It's reading at 20. So that, that should be good. And then the resistance here is 0.9 ohms. Now, if you go online, you can kind of look, you can find these charts that kind of give you ballparks uh, of what it should be. But really, every manufacturer is going to be different. Like the higher quality ones, caps are going to have lower resistance out of the factory. Um, but anyway, on this chart here, I think it's on the EV blog. Um, so if you look at here, this is a 200 volt 250 volt 22 microfarad so 22 microfarad at 250 volts you basically are, you basically want it to be 2.9 ohms or less okay and again every manufacturer is different so this caps from Ian so he's, he's using a higher quality cap so it's 0 0.9 so basically I just want to do a couple of these just so we can see what good caps look like uh, before we go ahead and pull those and test it but this device is awesome so again Tom thanks all right so let's kind of move on here and let's start desoldering. So there's three uh, film caps over here that we need to remove, okay? And it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five. And I can't really read the markings though. Like, I don't know which one is which. So I think we're just gonna start pulling them because the marking seems to be, let's see. Oh man, I could barely read that. I think John needs to get glasses. <laughs> I think the time is coming. 
I keep putting it off and putting it off. I'm like, I, I don't want to do it. And the thing is, like, I go to the, when I'm at the, working at the hangar, I do this all the time. This is like a modern, this is like an old man's magnifying glass, isn't it? <laughs> this is what the modern old people use. <laughs> um, let's see if I can read that. There's lots of dust on here. But according to the FAQ, uh, the flowchart, we're looking for 172, 174, and 175. So I guess we should just start yanking them. I can't really see any markings. This is C169. Let's see. So see if we can get some of that. So this says 169. Um, right here and then over here can't, uh, it says J yeah I can't really read I'm trying to find markings on the board on your mark. I suppose I can look at the manual oh right there one Oh, that's the old black one. Anyway, I guess we'll just pull them off because it's it's three of these here. And I, maybe once we get one off, we can see which one it is. So let's kind of start pulling the ones right next to the flyback. And I don't know if there's polarity on these guys. I'm going to take my marker, though, and I'm going to... I'm going to just kind of mark this so that after we remove it, we know how to put it back in. Um, so, left, and then all these are going to be, I'm going to put on the top. Okay. Alright, so let's kind of pull this dude off right here. All right, so which leads are this? I think it's these two right here. So let's get some solder here. I do think... Yeah, I think it's this and this. I just fell out. All right, so let's take a look here. So, 4.7K. Huh. We might have to get the manual out here. Okay, so this is 5.1. It's supposed to be 4.7. Wait, no, it's putting ESR. So it's supposed to be 4.7 and it's 5.1. So this one looks like it's good. 1.3. I, I'm I'm guessing that that one's fine. Oh, I can see the location now. So that was one. That was one eighty three. Let's look on here. That was, so that wasn't even one we needed to test. This is a cap, right? The four point seven K is throwing me off, but it's got to be. 
right, let's take a look here. Yeah, that's 183, so that wasn't even one we were supposed to test. That's not part of the, uh, so let's put this thing back in. Try to tack this real quick. in there so it's kind of come in and just finish it off this side I thought about just ordering these caps and just kind of shotgunning it but isn't this more fun <laughs> kinda all right so that one's back in so let's get the one next to it which Let's see. So that one is right next to the flyback. So I think it's these two right here. Is it this? Uh, which one is it? This and this. I think it's these two right here. Those two. I think it's that, that, and that. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of solder as we're doing this. It just really helps the situation. This one right here. Okay. And it's gonna fall right out here. Okay, so this one here is 3.3 .3 nanofarads. Okay. And by the way, when you order these film caps, you got to measure the lead distance and order the right one. So if we do find a bad one, we're going to have to maybe get our micrometer out. Doesn't seem to be polarity on these things, though, which is kind of weird. All right, this one's already reading weird, I could tell. Well, we just found our problem. Supposed to be 3.3, .3. and look at the ohms, it's infinite. We just found it, guys. This thing's shorted. Woot! <laughs> That's pretty awesome. This part is bad. All right, well, why don't we keep going and test the other ones? So I'm gonna order this right away. <sighs> we might actually fix this thing. 
That's exciting. All right, so that one that we just pulled was one, looks like 72. Yeah, that's the first one they list. So then it says 170. I'm guessing the 174 and five are these ones right here. Because the other two they want us to look at is 74 and 75. All right, so let's look at this one right here. Oh man, I'm so glad that part's bad, honestly. That's all I wanted was to find a bad part. So thank you, Arcade Club and Randy Fromm and the canoe guy that did that video and everyone that sent me links to it. <laughs> it really made me rethink what I was doing. I, I can't believe that when I looked at this flow chart over the summer, I completely dismissed those caps. I said, you know what? Can't be that. I already replaced all the caps. <laughs> so, all right, let's find this next one. Okay, so the next one here. Let's see. I believe it to be. Is it this and this? I think that's that one. And another one is here and here, maybe. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think it's this and this and this and this. Let's take my marker here. So I think it's that and that and then that and that is gonna be our pair. All right, let's get this first one here. Ah, 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 ah. So this one is I'm having a hard time reading that. Something to So if I do get glasses, am I am I going for like uh like hipster looking glasses? Is that was that what I need to do? Like horn? <laughs> horn horn rim? Uh Wow, I can't really... Oh, 8 and 2. So this is 8.2 nanofarads. Alright, so let's test this one. So this one's reading around 5. And our ESR is like 20 some odd ohms. I'm guessing that's high. I'm going to have to research though, like which one to get for this this is this is 1600 volts 26 ohms let me see if we can look at that i don't know if that's good or bad it's supposed to be it's supposed to be eight though and it's reading at five this one seems borderline to me i kind of feel like we should replace that one i mean if i'm going to order these parts i might as well just do it right I mean, what's the big deal? I already got it out. So I think we need to document that that's the second one. And that's, why is it shutting down? Maybe the battery wasn't bad before. So that's 21 ohms. Let me just see if we can look at that chart and get some kind of idea here. So this is 8.2 nanofarads, which isn't even on here. That one might be good for all we know. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that one back in. I think we'll order the part, and then we'll see what happens. I mean, we know that the other one's for sure bad. and But I'm, I'm thinking that the high resistance might be fine for that low of a, of a cap value. Boy, this is annoying. Go ahead here.
back in. Alright, let's go ahead and pull out the last one. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh. Alright, so the next one here is 0 0.39 uh, microfarads, 250 volts. Okay, so let's go ahead here. I guess these don't have polarity. So this is coming in at 376 nanofarads, and on here it says 0 0.39 microfarads. So I'm guessing that this is actually 0 0.376 microfarads, or 37, 376 nanofarads. But, and the resistance is very low, 0.28. So I would say that this one is definitely good. All right, so we've tested all three. Let me just confirm here. That's 76, right? So. Oh no, we didn't need to test that one. That one was not part of the uh, plan. Let's double check that. Okay, the one we just removed is 170. And no, that one's not part of the scheme. Hmm. So where are the other ones? 72. Oh, don't tell me they're all the way back here. That's 170. 172. Huh. 162. So I'm looking for 174 and 175. I hope they're not in the flyback cage. So I'm curious about that other one that we just did because I didn't actually look at it. Let's put this back in real quick and I think I'm going to pull that one back out again. I just want to see the marking on it. It's kind of stupid that they put the uh, part number on the board under the part. Like how are you supposed to find it? I just want to pull that one out again because where was it? Okay. 
So I want to see what the board marking is on that one. Can't see nothing. So that one, let's see, get some light in here. That's 174. So 174 was part of it, okay. So I'm guessing 175 has gotta be this one right here. All right, so I think 174 is questionable. I'm actually gonna leave it out then. Where did it go? And I'm gonna order this one. I'll look in the manual to make sure it's 8.2 nanofarads, 1600 volts. And then we're gonna have to measure the lead spacing with a micrometer to make sure we're ordering the right part. And then this one right here is 3.3 nanofarads, 1600 volts. So, all right, so then the last one, I'm guessing has to be this one right here. So let's go ahead and pull that one out. And let's see, I'm guessing it's these two right here. That one and that one. Guessing it's those two. This is kind of fun. <laughs> All right, here we go. That is 175. Let's take a look down here. Yeah, that's C175. So that's the last one according to the FAQ you need to check. So it was 172, 174, and 175. All right, so let's test out this one. So this one is 0.012K. Okay, point, let's take a look here. Point zero one two K, 630 volts. So if it's point zero one two K, point zero one two K, that would be, let's see, point zero one, 0 0.012 times a thousand. So it should be 12. Is that is that what I'm getting out of this? <laughs> Let's see what our device says. Why don't you say 12? Okay. Eleven point nine. <laughs> so um so I guess it, it is twelve. So, uh, so it's 12 nanofarads, uh, 2.6 ohms. I'm, I'm guessing that one is okay. I mean, do you think I should just order all three of these? If these are problematic? You know what, I'm gonna put this, this is not have, I can't get these confused, can I? I can. Well, this one is the bottom one, so. I'm just gonna write B on here. I think I'm gonna order all three and just shotgun it. Assuming I can find them. Um, I do think that one of them for sure is bad, which is this guy right here. This thing's shorted, guys. I mean, we, we have infinite resistance. I have no resistance at all. 
So there's a sh that thing's completely dead shorted. So I, I mean, we absolutely found a problem. Hopefully, it's the problem. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna order these parts, okay? And then the next video, we're gonna put them in and we're gonna go to the garage and we're gonna test this chassis out and maybe we have a working polo and we can move on with our life. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> so, but I gotta stop here. Uh, it's getting late and I gotta do dinner and stuff. <laughs> so, all right, why don't we do some viewer mail? You guys wanna hang out? Um, let me turn all this stuff off. Boy, I'm 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 pretty jazzed that we found a part that was dead shorted. That is exactly what I wanted to find in this video. Oh, I swear to God, I sure hope that's it. And you know what? The Polo Mon. Okay, so it, I've been saying that I hate this monitor, and I do. <laughs> but if we were to go back in time, and if I would actually read the FA the the flowchart correctly, okay. If I wouldn't, ha if I wouldn't have dismissed the, the caps they listed, excuse me, because I just said, oh, I already replaced those caps. I replaced all the caps. Well, no, I didn't, John. <laughs> so, so obviously I, I missed it when we were doing it, working in the garage there. Let me, let me fix the camera. So, all right, let's do some viewer mail. And, and by the way, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you got to email them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. Oh, the new Diet Coke is very good. <laughs> it's, uh, this is uh, Zesty Blood Orange. <laughs> and they also have Feisty Cherry and uh, some kind of mango thing. Anyway, if, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you got to email them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. That's john at johnsarcade.com. I printed a few here today. Um, and by the way, it could be a question, it could be a comment, it could be whatever. Just send it to john at johnsarcade.com. This one's from Todd. Um, he says, I recently picked up a uh, Arachnid English Mark Dart Super 6, which is identical, I believe, to the one you used to have in your basement. Did I read this one? I think he emailed before about this. Maybe he didn't see my response. This is, this is a new email. Everything is working, however, it sometimes will freeze uh, uh, in the middle of a game. I saw in a thread on your message boards that you have planned on replacing the headers and Molex connectors that go on the main board. I was wondering if I ever did this. I'm having uh, finding the correct parts to replace the Molex connectors and header pins. Believe it or not, uh, I bought it. This is broken. I was able to just replace a fuse. Uh, this is something I would not have tackled if it weren't for your channel. Thanks, John. Okay, I, I think Todd wrote in before, but didn't ask specifically about connectors. So, yeah, on uh, my uh, Arachnid Super 6 uh, Plus 2 dartboard, there's a power supply in there, and on the top, there's some pins, and a Molex goes in, and I would always reseat that when it froze up, and it would fix it, so I needed to, I need, I need to replace the headers and the Molex to fix that 100%, and the answer to your question as to where to buy those connectors, you need to go to Great Plains Hobbies, Great Plains, um, where's my phone? Uh, the pins that you need, is it .100? I always get this messed up. Um, it's the same ones I used on the Williams power supply. Uh, I think it's the point one hundred connectors. Was it point one hundred? Uh, anyway, the, the website is Great Plains Electronics, and they've got two size pins. You want the fatter ones? Let's see if I could find it for you real quick. So it's GreatPlainsElectronics.com. That's where I buy all these my pins and stuff. It's a great place. And you go to connectors, they have 0.1 and 0.156 square. So you need the 0.156 is what you need. Yeah, 0.156. That's what you need. Yep. Yeah, 0.156. So you need those. Those headers, um, you could buy them in longer lengths and then cut them off, and then you're going to need the connectors for them. So yeah, go to Great Plains Electronics and get the .156, and then they have like the .1. Those are the small round ones that run the Williams. You could replace those with square. Yeah, the .1 you, is not what you want. So hopefully that helps you. It is point one five six, right? <laughs> I'm starting to second guess myself. I don't know. Leave, leave comments. It's one of the two. <laughs> Order both. Um, all right. Uh, I, 
yeah, the point one are the small, tiny, round ones that are on the Williams games, and then or the Gottlieb's, I think. And then uh, the point one five six are the fat square ones. Anyway, moving on. Um, this is a note from Mendy Schmall to your Facebook page. Uh, do you know or have the ROMs for a Dr. Mario? Thank you, Shane. No, I don't. <laughs> but here's the thing, Shane. Uh, all of the ROMs for these games have been dumped in MAME. So all you need to do is search for the Dr. Mario. I don't, is it the Versus one, I'm assuming? So Versus Dr. Mario ROM. And then you download the arcade one and you know for MAME. And you'll have a zip file. Open up that zip file. There's going to be a bunch of uh, ROM files inside there. And those were literally dumped from the arcade hardware at some point. So... Um, that's what MAME is. Those MAME ROMs, someone took the, the EPROMs off Tapper, put them in a reader, read the data, and then dumped it in, dumped it into MAME by sharing it with the community in a zip file. That's that's what MAME is. Um, all right, let's save this one for last. <laughs> let's see what else we got here. Um, okay, this one's interesting. Um, Hey, John, uh, I am uh, Giuseppe from Italy. How's it going? Hopefully fine. Uh, I have been watching your videos for a while, and I find them very interesting and entertaining. My favorite ones are the John Quest series and the game device reviews you make in unique occasions. Do you guys really like when I do, like, uh, product reviews here? You know, I'm kind of torn about that whole subject. Like, do I, do I, like, review NES minis on this channel? I have. Um, I, I, I enjoy doing them to an extent, like that, that kind of stuff's very interesting to me. Um, I do think a lot of people find my channel because of that stuff, not because of this video, I assure you. <laughs> no one's going to search for this video. <laughs> um, as I was exploring the wide arcade world through your videos and self-searching, I stumble across the existence of cocktail table versions of the classic arcade games, such as this one. Uh, I'll show you guys. Okay, so this is some sort of a, uh, a bootleg, a Donkey Kong cocktail. Looks like it has an LCD display, probably a 60 in one board, I would guess. Anyway, he goes on, those game tables look so cool for me. Absolutely perfect for my house, which doesn't have a basement like yours. But should I really consider buying a Donkey Kong cocktail table? Are there any particular differences I need to know compared to the cabinets? Do I also need to have some basics on hardware management? Keep up with the good work, John. I hope you make new videos about the Nintendo versus games and cabinets since they are very interesting. That red tent one you got looks pretty sick in my uh, slick in my opinion. All right, so Giuseppe. So there's a whole gray market out there, okay? Uh, selling uh, these bootleg cocktail and upright cabinets like the one you showed me. Now, I don't know what's in that one that you showed me. Is it a, is it a PC? Is it a 60-in-1 Chinese multi-board running an older version of MAME? I have no idea. It looks like there was an LCD display. Now, Nintendo, though, did make a legit Donkey Kong cocktail. The one that you sent me is not that. The one you sent, actually, was a bootleg-looking Midway style, like Pac-Man or Galaga that someone put Donkey Kong art on and probably some multi-board. But if you're interested in a cocktail table and you want the original one, seek out the Nintendo one. There are some caveats though uh, with the Nintendo cocktail is that the Donkey Kong has a 13 inch monitor. So you're getting a smaller viewing angle. I do think the game's rather uncomfortable to play though. The joystick just kind of sticks right out perpendicular with the ground. Um, but if you want to dedicate, if, if you only got room for a cocktail, I mean, I would consider seeking it out. Um, I mean, plenty of people have the Nintendo Donkey Kong cocktails in their homes, and I, I think you'd probably be pretty happy with it. Again, just one game, though, right? You know, if you bought that bootleg one, it probably has 60 games on there. So, I don't know. You, you kind of have to decide for yourself. Um, all right, moving on here. Uh, this one's from Tommy. Hey, John, love the show. I'm happy to say that you are the one who lit the spark. <laughs> I printed this email and it kind of went haywire. Um, you are the one that lit the spark that reignited my love for classic arcade games and inspired me to create my own little arcade in my house. And he sent some photos. Oh, it goes on. I can uh, It's all cut off. <laughs> so, anyway, here's a photo of his arcade in his home. So that's a pretty great little setup there. Uh, Matt Mania. That was a game I used to play at 7-Eleven. So... 
I like that. I like your marquees on the wall. It's a good looking setup. Um, and they asked me, sent me a link to an offer up game. It was like a, a modified pole position. Uh, yeah, I would like a cockpit of, of, of pole position. If I ever got a cockpit of pole position, though, it would have to be the Namco one. Like, it, I just, that's the one I want. Like I want, and there's also like an upright Namco pole position that's crazy. People sent me links to it the other day on Twitter. Um, keep up the great videos. Take care and God bless. This is from Tommy Haru. So yeah, Tommy, you got a great little setup. I'm sorry I couldn't read all your email. It it really went haywire here. So, uh, all right, let's let's see what else here. Um, all right, where's that one I was saving? Where, where did I put that? Oh my God. Do ah here it is. Uh, so I got an email. Uh. After I did the year-end review, I got an email from Ernest, and he says, Hey, John, this is Ernest from Nashville. I am the viewer who sent you the Pratt XO Reserve Rum in the wooden barrel. <laughs> so, as you guys know, on the channel here, it's been a tradition. Anytime we have a big accomplishment, we enjoy some Pratt Rum that Ernest sent me a few years ago. Well, I've been running out of it. Uh, there's, we only have a little tiny bit left. He goes on and says, I'm so glad you have enjoyed the rum. I know you're almost out, so I'd like to send you another bottle uh, to replace uh, the barrel one. So, anyway, he goes on. Uh, by the way, the last time you read my letter, I said I was a viewer who didn't own an arcade video game. This is no longer true. My girlfriend found me an original Donkey Kong and gave it to me as a present for Christmas. That's awesome. So when Ernest started watching, he had no arcade game. So anyway, Ernest, uh, thank you, my friend, for sending me the Pratt Rum, um, especially the original one. And he sent me some more. So I guess we can have some, right? We got we got plenty of, of Pratt now to go around. <laughs> So, uh, so we want to typically save this for uh, special occasions, but but here I'll show you. So here's the original Parat rum he sent in this cool, you know, kind of Donkey Kong style barrel, and we've been enjoying this on the year-end reviews and and pretty much any time we we finish a project or something. But as you can see, we're at we're at the end of the Pratt life here. <laughs> so, but we have a, a refill here. Let's have. Should we have a little bit in my in my Diet Coke here? Ernest, thank you, my friend. <laughs> so I'll save this still. So we've got enough here for one more celebration. And then after that, we're going to have to crack open um, the new thing that, that Ernest... I, I really do like this barrel. It's funny, right? On top of the Donkey Kong. So here's the new one that, er, that Ernest sent me in this very special box. So Ernest, I, I truly want to thank you for this. Because this is part of the channel. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's to you and everyone else. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, I never heard of Pratt Rum until Ernest sent me it, and it is pretty darn smooth, I have to say. Now, I've diluted it a little bit here with some of my uh, Diet Coke Zesty Blood Orange, so... <laughs> that's a pretty good time. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, be sure to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. Uh, we do that show live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern at videogameoutsiders.com and also at riotcast.com. We're part of the Riotcast network. And uh, if you guys go to the iOS store or the uh, Google Play store, you can download our app. Just search for Video Game Outsiders. It's free, and you can get our new podcast, our weekly podcast, for free. It's the best way to listen to it. And then there is bonus content like the John Show, the Michelle Show, and then also we do a Blink Outsiders. So for $1.99 a month, you can get 12 additional podcasts on top of the weekly one. And other than that... I think that's going to do it. Uh, you, you guys really should check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash John and Michelle. Michelle and I do stuff there. We actually have a new thing, a new channel, a new project that I'm kind of proud of. And I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. But if all goes as planned, we're going to unveil it on Thursday. And we're going to be hosting it at twitch.tv slash John and Michelle. And believe me, I'll be talking about this uh, assuming it goes as planned. <laughs> but, but we're doing something kind of exciting, I think. And we've been working on it for a few weeks here, actually months, honestly. And it's a new thing. It is a new, new thing. And it, I, I think it's going to be cool. So go to twitch.tv slash John and Michelle on Thursday this week around, uh, go there around 8.30 or so. PM Eastern. So, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'll see you guys very soon. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm going to order those parts. And the next video, we're going to put those in, put this monitor back together, and 
and my god i hope we fixed it and if we did fix it it's full speed ahead it's like a huge weight a dark cloud i mean honestly i the Mortal Kombat, I've been, I haven't been very motivated because of this stupid monitor. Like, this really beat me up <laughs> over the summer. And if I just fixed it, or if we're about to fix it, that's pretty exciting. So, anyway, that's it. I'm done. I'll see you guys very soon. Later, and bye! <laughs>